Okay, so hello and welcome to South Hills Community Wellness. My name is Jacqueline Battaglia. Laura? Hi, Laura Vlasic. <laughs> <laughs> so we were developed because we felt like there needed to be a place that people could go to learn, connect, and collaborate on a variety of personal development, health, and wellness topics. We previously met Tuesday evenings from 6.45 to 8 o'clock, but in light of everything that's been going on, we've been doing Zoom calls frequently throughout the week to discuss these topics. So we've been bringing in experts from our community to shed some light on a, vari a variety of health and wellness topics. Um, we do have a disclaimer. We have a mutual agreement between our speakers and our members that these workshops are strictly to share knowledge, value, and to connect with like-minded people. South Hills Community Wellness does not agree or disagree with the content presented, nor are we promoting a service or product. These Zoom calls are being recorded, so please, if you know, mute or take yourself off the screen if you would not like to be recorded. Our mission, our goal and mission is to provide a place where people can come to strengthen their minds and better their lives. We hope that each and every one of you are able to make to take something away each week that will impact your life in a positive way. These presentations are also meant to be interactive, so please ask questions, um, comment, and um, you know, interact as much as possible. We wanna thank you for being here tonight. And we're, we are pleased to welcome Erin McCauley. Hi. Erin is a yoga instructor and energy heal healer who currently teaches yoga and offers energy healing through Point Park University, Mukshi Wellness Center, Mecca CrossFit, and Mount Lebanon. And she will be discussing and answering questions on how to stay present during difficult and stressful times. So welcome, Erin. Hi, thank you so much, Jacqueline. Hi, everybody. So I just wanted to start off this evening by saying that these are very stressful times for all of us. And most of this stress, I think, really comes from a sense of not knowing what's going to happen. There is a, a full anxiety over all of us just with questions of what will be happening next and a lack of control in our own understanding and awareness of what we're supposed to do. So the best thing that I think we can do for ourselves is understand what is happening within and go from there. Because truly, the only thing we ever have control over is ourselves. And part of the reason that these times are so frustrating, so stressful, is because we have an expectation of how things are supposed to go. So many of us, we have routines, we have habits, we have things we do every day that we are expecting to happen. Even if it doesn't happen at the same time every day, we know that we will be distributing a report or we will be driving to work or home from work or picking up our child or needing to feed our child at a certain time. And of course our children's lives and our relatives, our friends, they're all experiencing the same thing. So. It's not just our own, uh, our own environment and our own lives that are being disrupted, but it's a collective disruption. So of course it can feel ungrounded. So one of the main things that we can do to really work and stay grounded and feel present and connected is practice breath work and go through a few tactile observations of our world and and just kind of go from there. Once we find that groundedness within our own center, everything else seems to be easier to deal with. It's almost like, I don't wanna say magic, but it, there's an energy quality to it. And from those tactile observations, that breath work, or even just going outside and walking, getting our feet on the ground and wiggling our toes in the earth or the sand if you're at a beach or any sort of touch on our own body, our hands, are really great tools here to kind of create a calming sense about our own body. Just placing your hand on your heart, one hand on your belly, and doing some breath work can really help us feel centered and calm. So I just wanna encourage everyone to kind of start with that tonight. So taking your dominant hand, go ahead, place that over your heart, palm face down, and then take your passive hand and place it on your belly, right around your belly button, maybe a little bit lower. We're just gonna work on a little bit of breath here. So if you're feeling unsupported, definitely find yourself against a wall. You can put your back against it. You can even lay down, bend your knees and put your feet flat as well. So for this breath work, I don't know that you guys can see me all the way, but you're going to inhale and you'll feel your chest expand under your hand. 
And as you exhale, you'll feel the belly contract, pushing air out of the lungs. So we're just gonna go through that breath work a few times in and out of the nose here. So inhale. And then exhale. Hands right over the heart and belly, keep going. And as you continue this work, notice the sound of your breath as well. That's just another sense that you're adding to this practice of getting present. So what we're doing when we're breathing in and out through the nose, it almost feels as if the air is smacking us right between the eyes to go down the throat and you're gonna connect with your whisper muscles at the back of your throat and that's what's creating that oceanic sound that you're hearing in my own breathing. That inhale and exhale, I'm actually feeling the air in the back of my throat as it goes up and down. So keep going as you inhale, you feel the expansion and the air going into the throat and the lungs. And as you exhale, pushing the air back out. Just a few more breaths just like that, trying to get them longer, evening them out. Just two more, keep going. One more round of breath here. Really nice. Go ahead, take your hands out and maybe you just wiggle the fingers around a few times, opening and closing your hands. Hands are big energy receptors. When we think about the body, a lot of times we're not thinking about it like a battery, but we basically are. The front side of the body being the positive or the yang side, the giving side, the exhale, and the back side of the body being yin, being receptive, being the inhale. And that's another thing that's always a nice perspective piece, which we're going to talk about perspective tonight too. Um, you can go ahead and rest your hands somewhere. Good work. Um, perspective, just an understanding that when we are inhaling, we must allow that air into the body. You really have to relax in order for the lungs to have space to expand and to let that air in. There's a large amount of surrender in that part of the breath work. And that can be very difficult. A lot of us, like I said before, with these habits, these routines, these expectations, we're really pushing. We're trying to keep to a schedule. And that yang energy is very present there, that I must do, I must go, I must provide, I must produce. And what that can do is it's allowing some, it's really giving our energy away, um, as opposed to really nurturing and finding that space for ourselves first, which of course needs to have a strong foundation in order for us to give out to anyone else. So I really have a few things that I want to uh, talk about that we can control ourselves to kind of stay present at this time when everything is tumultuous. I already talked about some tactile exercises to regain your sense of control. And along with that, I mentioned that we are what we repeatedly do. So something that you can really take time to look at is in your daily routine, are you giving yourself any time? And this can be five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It can be at any time in the day. It doesn't have to be scheduled. But if you have something, just one, one moment in your day that you can set aside for yourself to have five minutes of breathing, five minutes of just sitting outside, five minutes of surrender for you to really have some observation of how you're feeling. If you're constantly on the go, looking for something to do, trying to push and pursue um, some sort of goal-oriented vision, there's not a whole lot of time to receive or inhale or allow or surrender. And I think especially in times of uncertainty, there's so much pressure to create a new normal that there's not enough awareness of what it is that's actually happening in the moment, which of course is the only thing that's ever 
really happening. So along with that breath work, keeping us super grounded, we also want to think about the idea that this is part of life in general, being faced with something that's unexpected. This change is very natural in life as well. And even though right now, so many of our habits and routines are changing, um, this can be looked at as something that can be part of our everyday life. Things happen every day, even within our habits and routines that are unexpected. Um, it's part of growth, it's part of learning, and that has to do with your perspective. Are you taking things in and allowing them to happen before re you react? Or are you upset already that the disruption has occurred, that things didn't go the way that they planned, that you planned? Um, <sighs> So the first yoga sutra that um, I wanted to share with you guys and talk to you about tonight, it's probably the only yoga sutra we'll really get to, is the idea that you shall never really know yoga. That's the first lesson of yoga. And I wanted to bring that up because it relates to what I was just talking about. Um, there's really only yourself that you can really connect with and know. There's no way that you can be the same every day. So even when you are on a yoga practice, a yoga mat, or you're on your way to work, or you're waking up and getting to your routine with your child, there are gonna be little things that are different every day. I also participate in theater, and that is one of my favorite places to have that life practice unfold, because no matter how many times you've run the lines, no matter how many times you've rehearsed the play, the experience of putting on the performance is different every night. The audience, reaction is different every night. The way that you perform is different every night. And that life imitate art concept is really unfolding right now. We get to rewrite entire scripts for our lives right now. And how much joy we find in it is going to directly correlate to how grounded we feel in what we need, what we ourselves, you as an individual, are needing and craving to feel grounded. Um, so with that, I wanted to talk a little bit more about some of those breathwork exercises that you can use to specifically feel grounded. So the work we did before with your hand on your heart and on your belly, just noticing that inhale and that exhale, feeling your body, you can take that to the next level when you close your eyes, bring your hands to rest on your lap here again. You can lean up against the wall if you like. And when we're breathing, close your eyes and start to focus really on the sound of your breath. And again, feeling the breath going in and out of the nose and along the passage of your throat. Filling and expanding the lungs. And then exhaling empty. We're going to add a little bit of perspective work in this breathing with a mantra. I'm going to offer on the inhale, thinking the word let. And on the exhale, thinking the word go. Keep going. And as you exhale empty, at the end of this exhale, pause empty of breath. And then before your next inhale, see if you can push a little extra energy air out and then inhale. Pausing at the top of your breath, sip in a little more air and then exhale.
And keep going like this for a few breath cycles, pausing at the exhale end, pushing a little more air out before you inhale. Again, pausing full of air, sip in a little more air. And exhale, empty, going at your own pace here. Keep going. Do one more. And now notice the position of your hands. Notice if you had them resting down or resting up. Flip one up or down so that you have one of each. And continue this work with your breath. Nice work. Three or four more full breaths in and out. Notice where your mind has gone. If the mantra has left you, bring it back. Nice work, finishing up, go ahead, open your eyes. Just notice if anything has shifted for you. A lot of times after some breath work, especially with awareness of our hand placement and a mantra, there will feel like an entire shift has occurred in the way that you feel energetically. You should feel calmer for sure. And you might actually feel lighter. It may feel as if you have let go and Probably what happened in this breath work is your body actually released some tension that you were not consciously holding on to, but the conscious breath work and the mantra, let go, those words, that part of your inner monologue really enabled you and your body to release some extra tension. So um, along those lines, the very subtle energy body lines, I wanted to bring up this book series by Pam Grout. This woman has written a couple of books that I really like. This is her second book in her series. This is E Cubed. Her first book is E Squared. And what I really like about these books is they have a bunch of energy experiments in them. And what do I mean by energy experiments? So Basically, the idea is that we are electromagnetic beings, but we are well, beings on an electromagnetic earth. And that, that understanding of energy is also what our thermodynamic universe is made out of. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. And it's, um, it's in a universe of duality. We have this feminine and masculine energy, this negative and positive energy. And again, this isn't something that is good or bad. When we hear negative, a lot of times this can um, mean something that is unwelcome or unsavory. And in this instance, it is simply two sides of a coin, um, two sides of a battery. Uh, you always see those plus and negative signs on a battery. And if you really apply that to our body, you can understand a little bit more about the electricity that runs through us all. Um, what I love about this work with your hand placement on your body and awareness when you're meditating is it is, uh, your hands are energy conductors. They really are. Um, and sometimes when you're meditating with that breath work, if you're really focused in, you might actually feel a little bit of 
tingling in your hands. You might see some colors in your hands. And again, these are all very subtle, energetic observations. Um, subtle energy I liken to imagination. This isn't something that is going to blow you away and be a loud booming voice in your head. This is the feeling of energy. No, this is going to be something subtle that comes to your mind just out of nowhere. And you might even wonder, is this something that I've thought about before? It feels familiar. And that's how you'll know that it's a truth. Because um, this energy, this subtle energy is within us all. And it's something that you can access if you're paying attention. That's what these books are about, paying attention. So one of these exercises um, that I did growing up with my own parents and my grandparents, I had a very energetically inclined family, uh, we would do things just sending mental messages to each other. I was raised to believe we're all kind of like radio receivers with our mental energy. And um, all you have to do is think it and it's out there in the ether. And if you are paying attention and you have some focus, you can send that thought to a friend. So something as easy as thinking about someone and then them calling you. Was it a coincidence or did you send them a mental message? Or you show up at the right place at the right time. Was that meant to happen that way? Or were you drawn there for a purpose from some intention in your mind? you wanted strawberries and you got to the store, magically there was only one uh, strawberry package left and you were able to get it, but they're just in time. So things like that. And when you're thinking on such a subtle level, it really relates to what we're going through right now, that disruption, that chaos that comes into your life and um, seems to be disrupting you. It's really your thoughts, right? It's your anxiety about not being able to do things the way that you're used to. There's a lot of change. There's a lot of things that you're not expecting coming your way. So again, the best thing to do in those situations is really find out what's happening within that is creating that anxiety. What is it that you expected that's being thrown out of, out of alignment? And how can you bring yourself back into feeling aligned even though it didn't happen the way you were expecting it. So that breath work, that understanding of your own body and what you can tactile connect with to get you grounded. And then going into that mental work, figuring out what kind of language am I using to talk to myself about this? Am I putting myself down for not being able to get all the laundry done that I was able to get done when my children were at school? Am I rushing through making things happen because I feel like I'm unproductive because I'm not doing the same stuff that I was doing before. And of course, in these kinds of situations, we always have so much opportunity for growth. Um, so that's why I wanted to mention this book so that perhaps there can be some of us out there who embark on some of these energy experiments. One of the experiments in her first book is all about the law of attraction, which is a really popular, trendy topic. And when we think of something enough, chances are it's going to come into our world. So uh, one of the experiments that I like to think about is um, how many cars and the color of cars that you run across. So this is a little experiment you can even do in the next couple of days if you're ever able to get out and about. Um, you can just kind of, or just looking out your window to see what cars are passing by. If you think you're going to see a whole lot of red cars, chances are you're going to see a whole lot of red cars. And you can really work with that experiment. You can say, okay, I saw a lot of red cars, but what I'm really looking for is a yellow car. I'd love to see a yellow car. And the interesting thing, and what I love about these experiments, is you can sit at that window all day and not see a yellow car and be like, well, I did everything right. I meditated, I focused, I sent my intention, I was clear to the universe with my message, I felt good about and pure about my truth, um, and you didn't see a yellow car, but then you turn on the television and the first thing you see is a commercial with a yellow car on it. Or, and, and this is just kind of speaking to some of the unexpected ways that we can have things show up in our lives and they can still be fulfilling our truth and um, matching our energy. So um, yeah, that's all with that.
and no man steps in the same river twice. So again, remembering that it's a part of life, that things are gonna change and keep going forward. And uh, those affirmations to help control your inner monologue. Just wanna go through a few of those um, while we're talking about that subtle energy and um, how we're choosing to see things, our perspective. So one of the most basic shifts in our perspective can be life is happening for me, not to me. So this is a very basic understanding and awareness of that yellow car situation. Yeah, I asked for that yellow car to be driving by my window and then I saw it somewhere else, right? You still had something happen that you were asking for. It just wasn't exactly as you thought, but was that necessarily such a bad thing? So just a shift in your perspective there. Also the idea, I am growing. Growth is positive change. So you can have change in your life and it can still be extremely positive. It doesn't have to be scary, although it can be, depending on how you choose to look at it. And I know that can feel like a heavy burden. It can feel like there's too much responsibility in how you choose to look at things. There's a virus, a pandemic, it's scary, people are freaking out right now. Um, how can this be positive change? Well, um, as we allow our uh, air to come into our body, when we inhale and we surrender to that, there's a bit of surrender work that we really as a collective can help ourselves heal that anxiety by just having an understanding and awareness that things are changing anyway and how we choose to look at the opportunity for that change is really our own initiative how you want to perceive your growth so for example if you have more downtime isn't that something that a lot of us are looking for anyway a lot of the time oh i wish i had time to read this book i wish i had time to do that and this how opportune first of all it's the spring equinox so this is a great time energetically cosmically for our earth to kind of rejuvenate um, for this side of the earth and just really feel like you can plant some seeds to build upon and this again relating to really subtle energy and some affirmation some mantra work just the idea i am growing growth is positive change. So you can plant that seed that when you, whatever you're going through right now, you're gonna learn from that and it will be a positive experience that you can take with you. I've got two more affirmations for you guys. So uh, the first one is my needs, thoughts and feelings are important. I think at this time, especially when there's so much, um, again, external seeming control over our lives, that it's really important to remember what you do have control over. Back to the beginning of when I started talking, just taking five minutes out of every day can make you feel more grounded. It doesn't have to be at the same time. Um, it doesn't have to be in the same situation. But if you say, listen, I'm going to find five minutes today and I'm going to sit down and I am going to just close my eyes and breathe. I'm going to put my back up against the wall for five minutes and put my hand on my heart and my belly and listen to my breath. I'm going to walk around my house. I'm just going to take a walk outside barefoot and get my feet really touching the earth. Just some tactile responses to your own senses, really getting you grounded in what you're feeling physically. And then once you make that connection to that physical understanding and awareness, so much easier you have so much more space to figure out those subtle energies what kind of inner monologue you have going on and where your perspective is because of that um so one more uh <laughs> probably won't be surprising affirmation there is opportunity for creativity when facing the unexpected so i'll say that again there is opportunity for creativity when facing the unexpected and that's really where we're at right now. Again, <laughs> it's just such a different situation that most of us have ever experienced before. I know in my lifetime, which is a short 37 years, I certainly haven't seen anything like what we're experiencing now as a collective. Um, 
And it's really interesting to see how many people are reacting in such beautiful ways, how there is um, a tendency to feel more connected to your immediate environment, to your immediate community, and to have an awareness on a smaller scale of what's going on. Um, with so much access to the internet, through the news, all of this content that is around all the time, it can be really distract, distracting from your own content, from your own potential, from your own thoughts and how you're speaking to yourself. So I find this time in particular, the opportunity for creativity is to really find um, some space for yourself to rediscover what it is that motivates you that that pushes you to not just be a part of a workforce or a family but to be a part of your own life to have a purpose when you are um push, presenting yourself to the rest of the world um and a really keen awareness of where you're coming from when you are presenting yourself and there's no better time to do that when you are isolated. <laughs> when you have some time to really spend on your own and go within because so, so much of our lives revolve around groups, around being a part of a force, a workforce, um, an education community, a daycare community, um, wherever it is that you find yourself normally in your day, um, that's probably not where you are right now. So there's all this unexpected opportunity for creativity to kind of rediscover what it is that pushes you. Um, the, uh, digressing slightly just to talk about the cosmic energy here. Uh, we did just go through a very strong astrological cycle that I would term a revival energy. Um, this Mercury retrograde, the way the signs that it moves through, um, Aquarius especially, and uh, Capricorn has a lot of aspects in the air right now. Aquarius is innovation, moving forward, new technology. Um, Capricorn is hard work and perseverance. And on top of that, we've got all this Pisces energy, which is the dreamiest energy that you could possibly come across. And Capricorn and Pisces are naturally usually disruptive to each other, but because Mercury, which is the sign of communication, is the energy of communication and travel. Um, because it was retrograde at that time, that is a really um, introverted energy where you are supposed to go within and kind of figure out how you're communicating, how you're traveling, what motivates you internally to present yourself in those communications and put yourself out into the world. And with uh, Pisces and Capricorn aspecting each other all through that and then landing in Aquarius at the end of that retrograde cycle. It was a revival of our innermost dreams. It was supposed to help you figure out, hey, when I was a kid, I used to dream all the time about uh, doing this particular sport or having this kind of influence. And because of this great opportunity we have right now to plant brand new seeds, have completely clear vision, oh my goodness, what an amazing opportunity to find creative avenues to spark or revive those dreams from your childhood from, that really make you feel purpose-driven. It is a purpose-filled dream. It's not just, um, oh, I wanted to win a championship of my baseball league. No, it is oh, I love that game and I love how it brings people together and perhaps I can um, share some of that love by being a part of my community in some way and teaching baseball online now because that's all that we can do. And before you wouldn't have had that opportunity because maybe your children have grown up and you thought that wasn't something that you could still offer. But now that we have these platforms that are opening up, there's a new opportunity, a new avenue for you to get back into, quote, the game, because I did use baseball as the analogy there, and just find a, a purpose behind what you love to do and how you are finding yourself in your community, in your life, um, fulfilling that purpose. Um, I think I've talked quite a lot already, and I want to have time for questions, if there are any. Um, so before we round up, I just want to really um, 
mention again that when you're talking about perspective and with regards to your external influences, especially right now, it can be important to manage your content flow. So this could mean limiting how much news you're watching and also being really careful about what kind of news you're choosing to watch. Uh, there are so many different kinds of avenues for people to receive news. Um, be mindful of who you're receiving it from. There, as a former journalist myself, there's not an oath <laughs> that you take, but there's supposed to be a public service oriented mindset behind journalism. When we present a story as a journalist, it's supposed to be simply to inform only for information. I find that um, sometimes reading the news can be really beneficial, just kind of a break from watching someone else emit their own energy, emit their own inflection, have their own perspective or opinion inserted into the information that is being disseminated. Um, so just a little bit of awareness of that content, right? So many of us have had our external worlds changed um, it can feel comforting to have those um, really specific uh, slots of content intake from external sources in our lives. But right now, because of the topic of the content, because of the heightened level of anxiety behind the communication, it can just be really beneficial to limit how much time is being spent interacting with news sources, and other information dissemination, especially when there is so much information and it is so consistently, so rapidly changing. Um, so that kind of correlates with setting aside me moments. Make sure you've got those five, 10, 15 minutes sections of time in your day just to breathe and keep it improvisational, those moments that you find. And, Try to be easy on yourself. Oh, I've only found five minutes in the morning. That's amazing. You found five minutes in the morning. I didn't get my time until the end of the night, but it was 15 minutes. So just again, that perspective behind what you're able to do for yourself and how well you're taking care of yourself. Um, finally, I just want to offer a few more tactile practices that you can find in your body to um, Find some gratitude in your day to add any sort of very subtle positive energy into your environment. Um, so there are three uh, yoga postures that I want to talk about. One is um, actually putting your legs up a wall. So in order to get there, I don't know if you guys can see me, you're going to lay right next to the wall, sit right next to the wall, get your legs nice and long on the wall. Let me see if I can adjust this so you can see me so you can see the legs along the wall and then you're gonna lay down so that you're straight out from the wall to swing your legs up the wall and this posture when your legs once they're up the wall you can place your hand one hand heart one hand belly and do that breath work but this is just really nice and grounding it's also a bit of an inversion it's going to change the blood flow in your body and just a little bit of a shift in that perspective, that restful, mindful breath work as you're laying there too, can really be really grounding even though your feet are in the air. So another posture is called child's pose. And this posture can be taken a few different ways. So I wanted to show child's pose. Classic child's pose, you bring your knees apart and crawl your hands forward to rest your forehead on the ground. This is called balasana. Your hands are touching the ground. Your forehead is touching the ground, the knees, the feet, all of that. And you're breathing in and out, bringing your legs together. You might put a pillow on the forehead, under your forehead if it doesn't reach the ground. But this is really talking about your hands connecting as well to the body. You bring your hands around to your feet, turn your cheek to one side and rest your forehead. And that way you're really closing your circuit of energy here by connecting your hands to your feet. And you can um, turn your head either direction there just to release the neck on either side. And just breath work in any of those poses, really grounding, really connecting the whole body, all the systems, especially with your hands, resting on your body somewhere as well.
And I think that's all I've got for this evening. I just want to ask if anyone has any questions. There was a lot that we covered um, just in basic subtle energy work um, to refocus your perspective um, through connecting first with some tactile grounding exercises to stay present in disruptive times. Yay. Thank you so much, Erin. That was amazing. Awesome. <laughs> um, one thing that really stuck out to me was when you said, like, this time we get to rewrite our entire lives. Yeah. And I just, and I was writing about that earlier, just kind of how it's like a, I don't know, kind of like a reset, like anything yeah. you thought about the world or what you thought about yourself, or it's just a time to really, you know, check in and reflect and, and just do and be whatever it is that you, you know, that you want for your life and your future. So I thought that that was, that was so interesting. I agree. That's exactly it. A lot of opportunity in a scary time. I agree. And again, it's really that perspective, right? How you are choosing to see that opportunity and um, take advantage of it, how you can really rearrange your body from the inside out and how you're reacting to the situation simply by noticing what it is that's really happening, um, especially from within, especially from your own reactions, from your own inner monologue, that conversation you're having with yourself. I think it's just really cool, like everybody, like, teachers to learn to teach online or to just try and find a new way to do the things that you've always done easily a different way, you know, right. to try and just regroup and learn how to, you know, work in a different way or just how you can help other people by still being at home. So yeah. it's just kind of a cool cool thought. That and I think like everyone together is going through the same thing and we're all being pushed out of our comfort zone at the same exact time. And I think mm -hmm. that perspective is so big here, like how we choose to look at it is so important. And I liked how you said being mindful of who you're receiving your news from because I know like all day I try to stay away from that and just like live in my bubble and do the things that are good for me and my family. But then when everyone goes to sleep, I will check in with that. And, and it doesn't do me any good. I mean, so it is really important of who I get that information from. Yeah. And it's nice to become more aware of how much control you have over that still, just with the feeling of our schedules being so interrupted to be able to have control over what we're exposing ourselves to and reminding ourselves uh, how much control you have over that can be really important. Yeah. Very cool. Anybody else have any questions? Hi, Lori. Hi. You were great. I really enjoyed it. Oh, great. Thank you Thanks. so much for all the tips. I really like, like that about the cars, the right. color of the cars. Yeah. I just found it like really striking because my grandparents we would sit out on their porch and we would watch the cars go by and we would guess the colors going by. So that was like really struck. It was kind of strange when you said it and like eerie, but I, li I liked it. That's fantastic. And so synchronistic for you to mm -hmm. be able to relate to that. and have yeah. that. That's great. Mm -hmm. And I would highly recommend doing some more energy experiments because they're so much fun. Yeah. I'm going to try that again. Yeah. I'm older. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Awesome. Aaron, if you could put your book in the um in the notes, just put what the that sure. book there. Again, that name is Pam Grout, P-A-M-G-R-O-U-T. Um, and she has two books, E Squared and E Cubed. So E Squared is her first set of experiments, and then she came out with a few more. And we'll reach out to her also because when we hear of good books, we always try to reach out to the authors and we've had a lot of luck and we're really That's appreciative awesome. to how many people are giving to our community. So we'll make sure we send a message over. So That's thanks awesome. for that recommendation. Of course. Yay. Well, thank you so much. Does anyone else have any questions, comments? All righty. All right. Thank you guys so much for being here.
can um I don't know if you want to give your information or um if anyone wants to reach out to you. Oh, sure, um, yeah. um, you can always visit my website. Uh it is energymattersyoga.org and there is contact information there. You can find also my social media connections through that website. So again, that's energymattersyoga.org. Um and I and again in speaking in alignment with energy matters, um the reason that I chose .org is because I do feel that healing is awareness and not a business, even though we are a capitalistic structured society. And that is something that I have to fall in alignment with just because that is the current structure of the external environment. Um, truly healing is awareness. Um, when you go to a doctor, a doctor isn't following you home and making sure that you're doing everything that they said. Uh, what usually happens is you are in an exam room and you find out that what you has been bothering you is actually something real, something concrete, something that has a name, something that has symptoms, something that has treatment. And then that doctor offers you all of that information, all of that awareness of what is going on with you. And then you take that awareness and you do the healing work from within. Healers create the space for you to find the healing. So it can be as simple as a perspective shift. Um, or uh, it can be a chemical shift too that occurs when you are able to um, make those really subtle changes to your own internal energy, how you're perceiving, how you're choosing to look at things and um, feel grounded. Very cool. <laughs> good information. Maybe you'll come back and talk to us again. Of course, I would love to. Because <laughs> I want it all. Of course, I could talk about it for hours. <laughs> and I'll make sure that I put all of your information too when I go through and I post this on Facebook and then YouTube, if that's okay. Thanks, Jackie. Okay. Yeah. All right, thanks, thanks guys. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. That was Bye. awesome.